Hello Internet! Today we are going to do something a little bit different. I'm bringing you blind critiques. Very first time I've done this. So when this is done, please leave a comment to let me know if you like this episode. Uh, if you want to get straight to the good stuff, there is a link to all the photographer sections down in the description. But let me start with a little intro. What are blind critiques? Blind Critiques, this is the first time that I'm really looking at these images. I'm giving you my first impressions. I'm going to critique, tell you how to uh, break down the image, what's good about them, what's bad about them. How can these images get better? Also, all of these uh, images have been submitted by various photographers who are looking for portfolio review or critiques on these images. Um, it is anonymous, so good or bad. Um, I do want to respect their privacy for the images, but they do want the these critiques and want me to help them get better. So I am hoping that by doing this online for all of you here on YouTube, that you too can learn a little something, learn what makes a good image, uh, what makes a weak image, and how these can get better. So I have a couple of photographers here. Let's get started. Okay, so for this first photographer, we have a couple of headshots here. Um, they're not terrible, but they're not great. So these four headshots that we've got going, uh, let's actually just pull that up like that. That looks better. Well, number two here is really the only one that is any good. Um, but the problem here is there's no separation from his head to the background. Skin tones look good. Retouching looks decent. Um, he's got catch lights here, but his head just disappears into the background. Uh, it looks like the photographer turned the light on here, but it changed all of his skin tones. He's a little too orange, a little too purple. It just doesn't look very good. Um, the expression leaves a little something. I don't really know what the photographer was going here for. Um, this one uh, colors all off. He looks very orange. Learn how white balance works. Um, you're losing a bunch of detail here. There's no catch lights in the eyes. Um, you really need those catch lights for good headshot. Otherwise, there's just no life or soul to the picture. Um, I do like that he's not pushing the hand up into his face. It's just kind of lightly resting. If you're going to have your model touch your face, don't dig in like that. Just like graceful touch. Doing that okay. Um, this one here looks slightly out of focus. Um, the turn is a little too far. The lighting is on the broad side of the face. Um, and we'll talk about broad versus short side in a little bit. All in all, not terrible. It's okay. And guess what? I'm going to throw this photographer under the bus. This photographer was me! So these are <laughs> literally my first week owning a camera, doing headshots, just trying to practice, trying to learn light. Uh, this one was window light. I realized, hey, uh, he needs to be next to the background. I did turn on the light. I hadn't learned white balance yet, still learning stuff. Um, I remember I was using those $10 work lights with like the big wire thing to try and blow out that back wall. And uh, you can see some of that kind of gracing right here, the side of his cheek and his nose. Um, this I think was all available light. You've got some light spill from the green. Um, I can talk to you later about how to do that. If I would have put in a reflector or a light or something or a flag, uh, it would have helped with that green spill, or you can retouch that in Photoshop, but that should have been done. So now that I've thrown myself under the bus, <laughs> here is uh, old and new images. So here are the very first week of owning a camera. Oh, so much potential yet so much to learn. And here are some of my current images. So here you've got a very nice studio setup. See how that white, so much cleaner. The skin, skin tones, ah, they look good. The depth of field isn't crazy. It still shows all of his facial features here. It's definitely not out of focus. Great expression there. 
And then here, uh, this one here is actually natural light in a tunnel. So you've got light coming in through the back of the tunnel, and then she's hiding just from the lip. So all of that light is wrapping around the front side of the tunnel, lighting her here. I actually did this for a tutorial a couple of years back. And then this one here, I've got uh, a reflector, I believe, and a softbox, uh, softbox on this side of her face, just giving it just a little bit of fill. You've got motion, you've got hair movements, uh, the skin color is accurate. So obviously these photos are a lot better. Uh, this photographer has improved greatly. <laughs> All right, but now that you see what blind critiques are going to do, I'm going to jump into the five photographers that we have today. So I will be pointing out the good and bad things about all of these photos. Again, these are all constructive criticism to help these photographers and you watching grow with your photography. All right, so let's dive into it. Photographer number one. Make these thumbnails a little smaller so I can see them all here. Okay, so I do know that this photographer, uh, I recently did the Kelby One photo walk. So this photographer came on the photo walk with me, and these are the images from their walk. So it was just about one hour's worth of time, what could they see? So let's take a look at these. Flower. My personal opinion on flowers, unless it is the best, most beautiful flower photo you've ever seen in your entire life, skip it. Flowers are not interesting. Everyone shoots them. If you make it really, really good, it's got to be like the top 1% really good to show a flower photo. Otherwise, it's a very boring flower. Uh, bottle. It's okay. Uh, this photo, I don't really know what the focus is. When you are when you are too wide or showing too much in the frame and it doesn't have a clear subject, kind of same thing here. Uh, I think going for the silhouettes, uh, there are more interesting ways, uh, especially framing it a t couple steps closer and aiming the camera more up. You wouldn't get all of, uh, you'd be able to get some of these branches, but without all of this garbage, I think. Um, this photo could uh, improve greatly from some cropping. Um, I think the most interesting details are somewhere in here. I mean, I think that's already kind of more interesting. You're going for more texture. Um, it's okay. Bringing out this red color so I can actually see this. Zooming in, a little more depth of field. This is interesting. Again, could help from some cropping. Um, something like this, maybe. A little bit more interesting. Find those details. What is interesting about the photo? Show that and nothing else. Crop out anything else that is not interesting. Again, I think this right here is the detail that they're going for, but there's too much. So. Get closer to your subject, get physically closer, use a longer lens, use that telephoto lens. This is interesting, it's got some depth, it's got some reflection, they're playing with composition. Uh, exposure. All right, check out the histogram. For those of you who don't know a histogram, uh, this shows you all of the tonal values in your photo. A good histogram See this spike? This is where all the tonal values are. A good histogram has all of the tonal values in this range, looking like this. So this was very underexposed. It's, uh, eh. There are more interesting ways to capture graffiti. Here we go, showing depth. Um, the only problem with this photo is there is no subject. Um, and generally, unless you are peering through something, this thing right here, whatever is closest to the camera, should be the thing in focus. Otherwise, people think it's out of focus. Uh, not really looking through this pole. Plane of focus is here, so kind of miss that. All right, silhouette, a little more interesting. Um, I still would have brightened this a little bit so we can see that silhouette a little more. Um, there are more interesting shapes. If you're going to do a silhouette, it's got to be a really interesting shape. 
Okay. Interesting composition. Um, the color is off by getting a more accurate color. I think this would is a more interesting photo. Um, and you know what? There are actually times where you're just going for the abstract and the shapes and the color. Um, if the color is not adding to the photo, take it out. So people ask me, when do you do black and white? Do black and white when color doesn't make the photo more interesting. So for example, if we do black and white and, you know, maybe pump a little bit of contrast, a little bit in, um, just a tad of clarity there and then crop out any distracting factors, anything that doesn't make the photo more interesting. I already love this more. Uh, the great here bugs me, but this is a more interesting photo. Color was not adding anything to the original. Uh, I can actually pull up. Here we go. Here's a before, after. Color wasn't adding anything to the original. Uh, I just kind of had this orange wash. So uh, either make the color an artistic choice, make the color accurate, or take it out. Um, none of those things happened here. Um, and then framing the composition, it was just a little bit too wide of a frame. So that is not as interesting. Oh, uh, let's see. Was that the end? Oh, no, we still got a couple more here. Let's go back here. Again, I like where it was going with this. You got some depth, got some angles. Um, zoom in more on the subject, more on the area of interest. And I think, you know, it's still, uh, it still definitely has some issues and needs some work, but getting closer to the subject, I think here will really help. And I believe one last one. Okay. So for the photo walk, I do know this one was submitted and I was very close to picking this one. There are a couple of reasons I didn't. One, where's the subject? Is she the subject? Are the stairs the subject? Is the light the subject? Don't know. Two, is the color adding or taking away from the photo? This can be argued either way because you have a lot of cool blue tones of the light. You've got a big bay of windows over on this side. Um, you've got the orange on the table, the orange of the flowers. Um, but it also could be straightened, uh, uh, transform. See, now our lines are straight up and down. Just that little move makes it feel more intentional. If you're going to tilt something, tilt it intentionally. If it's just off by a little bit, uh, that, that annoys me. <laughs> it annoys most people. Um, I think doing something like this, um, not globally, because you lose some of the darkness and moodiness of the photo, but bringing out some of these brick details, because these are super interesting details up here, um, but the original photo doesn't have any of that. Um, I would love to see you know, something a little bit more like this. If you're gonna put in color, play with that color a little bit more. Um, but again, you lose all these details, but you have to decide, as an artistic choice, do I want that there? Do I not want that there? If you don't want those details there, then it might be a more interesting choice to crop them out. Again, I like this splash on the table, but I hate this. Um, it, it just draws your eye right to it. What's the first thing that you see in the photo? Um, unfortunately, cropping that out, you lose all the blue on that wall. Um, let me reset this to the photographer's original. This is what was submitted here. Uh, very close. I think it was interesting. You're playing with line and shape and light. Um, more could have been done here. Have a concrete focus. So here are all of your images. Um, this photographer, I'm not sure your experience to the level, but it sounds like you are at a point where you are still learning the camera, still learning. Um, how do I get techniques? How do I get exposure? How do I play with aperture? keep learning, keep going. Um, still a lot that can be improved just with your, um, with your camera techniques. Um, definitely work on exposure as well. You've got some underexposed ones. Um, this one, if you're going to underexpose all that work on composition. So get closer to your subject, work on find what is the main subject? What is the reason why I want to look at this photo? Just capture that and nothing else. 
um, and then worked a little bit more on mastering those camera controls. Um, and I love to see what you've got next time. Okay, photographer number two. Here we go. Okay, we got some portraits. We've got some animals. Um, again, pictures of your pets, unless it is, unless it is the most interesting photo ever. Eh. Um, be intentional. Um, these don't feel intentional. This one, if it was, uh, first of all, let's let's uh, do this. If it was straightened, if it was color accurate, and maybe if it was just the cat, this feels like an intentional photo, and this doesn't. So um, be intentional. Same thing as photographer number one, get closer to your subject. Um, I am going to pull those out. Not a lot to say about pets or babies or flowers. <laughs> okay here. All right. So it looks like we got some cosplay photography going on. So you were definitely exposing for the lightsabers. Um, I got a pretty good looking histogram here. Interesting. I like it. A little more plain with light. Uh, just like I was saying with my old photos, separation from the background is everything. So see how this is super dark and the arm super dark and it all just kind of blends in. Separation from the background. Um, what is the first thing you look at? Well, the first thing you look at is the area of brightness, the lightsaber. What's the second thing you look at? Area of brightness, the background. Where's the face? The face is like the third thing I look at. So in addition, just getting closer to your subject, um, separating them from the background, what's the first thing you look at? If there is a face in the photo, it better be the face. If not, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, okay, here. This is kind of interesting. Um, I wish this were straight, so it's wider here than it is down here. Um, this could probably be either cropped out or cloned out. Uh, I don't like that his elbow is just slightly cropped out. Um, pay a little bit closer attention to your frame. Um, I don't know what cosplay character it is. Uh, I'm sure he's supposed to be sloppy, in which case, well done. Um, it's interesting. All right. So this one, again, separation from the background. Uh, the histogram, I know that you're trying to keep these brightness values um, Trying to keep those brightness values, um, but there are ways of making it a little more interesting. Uh, I know you sent me a JPEG. Uh, if you're shooting raw, you have a little bit more wiggle room to work with. So that is another tip. If you're still working on getting that exposure, don't shoot JPEG. Shoot raw. Um, otherwise, you just lose all of this information. That is a tutorial for another day if you don't know what I mean, but hopefully we do. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, we have a cosplayer in a location. Uh, you've got a good exposure. You've got some foreground elements. You've got some interest up here. What, oh, very close. What I would love to see here is separation from the background. Um, either lighting up something in the background or aiming a light just off camera at them so that there is light coming down their arm. Um, they're just kind of fading into the background, which I don't think is the intention. Also, I think this is a pretty cool photo, but it could help by what is your main subject? Your main subject is this character here. How do you get closer to your subject? Get closer to your subject. Um, I understand you lose some of the, some of the moss up here. Um, this one is actually one that you can't fix in post. Um, so what you want to do if you want that moss in the photo and you want them, use a longer lens, get lower down. So you're going to get more foreground, more depth. Uh, the moss will be a little closer to their head. Um, they won't be in this black shadowy void, this area here. You're going to get a more interesting photo by lowering your camera angle. So sometimes the first photo that you get is not the best photo. Keep working, keep playing with it. 
Um, ah, here, there we go. Settings, reset. Back to the original there. Uh, do we have more photos? Yes, we do. Where'd it go? Pets, here we go. Okay, what is the subject? This is the subject. So how do you make the subject the very first thing that you pull into frame? Make them bigger in frame. So I understand that you wanted to get the trees and everything. Uh, you could have pulled back and used a longer lens. Um, I do like that they are in the light here. Um, again, cropping can go a long way to making this a better photo. I like that better already. What is your subject? Get closer in on your subject. Uh, I think that is a running theme for today. Get closer to your subject. Make the main subject the main subject. All right. So we've got some uh, cosplay thing going on here. Um, skin tones. Skin tones should always look like skin tones. So I think warming it up just the slightest. Um, this looks incorrect. If you want to go stylized, you could make it. Uh, stylized by, you know, giving it that. <laughs> you guys kind of see what I'm going for. Giving it that Walking Dead type effect uh, would probably be a little something more like that. But as is, uh, the skin tones are a little blue, a little purple. Um, if you have skin, make the skin accurate. Cool photo. Okay. Aha, here we go. So this photo, let's take a look. This photo was shot with a 50 millimeter wide open at 1.8 ISO 800. Okay. So when you're aiming things directly at the camera, think about what is it that I want depth of field. Do you want the thing in front to be in focus? If you wanted it to be blurry, even shooting it at F4, it still would have been a blurry but I would have been able to tell what the prop is. It wouldn't have been so blurry that you can't see any of this. It would have been just blurry enough that I see there's depth of field. Um, shooting wide open F1.8 is not always the answer. Uh, choose your depth of field with intentionality. Um, that would have made this a little bit better of a photo. Again, skin tones, uh, they're looking just a little bit blue. If you're going for that, make it more stylized. Again, if you're super off, it's an intentional choice, hopefully. <laughs> if you're just a little bit off, it looks like a mistake. Um, so I think those two things would really help this photo. Um, yeah, otherwise, cool photo. Um, I wish I could see just a little bit more of the mouth, just bringing it gun down half an inch. This one, oh, this is what the dehaze filter was meant for. Ah, bring some of that back. I love this is a photo much more than this is a photo the washed out lens flare look personally not a fan um so let's just add a little bit of punch to it okay what do we think about this well the first thing that i'm looking at is this giant white space the second thing i'm looking at is these things of yellow so uh all in all pretty good photo uh i'm sure the three pilots here love this photo um but again do think about shooting with intentionality uh, getting a little bit closer to your subject, zooming in on your subject, um, exposing for the subject, because again, the original exposure, all three of these guys here are washed out. Um, and then, so think about making your subject the biggest thing in frame, or the most prominent thing in frame, or at least the thing that your eye goes to first. These three pilots here are none of those things. Uh, I see the white, I see the yellow, and then I see them. So, um... Make your subject the subject. Make it the best thing in the photo. Here we go. Ooh, interesting. Lots of stuff happening here. All right. I like the lightsabers. Soccer for the lightsabers. Um, whether these are turned on in real life or glowing, either way, kudos. Good job. Um, I'd love to see a little more light here. If you just zoom in on this area, um, it's a little too dark. So what you could do, see, that, I hate that on the rest of the photo, but if you were to just do that in this one area, um, it would help bring a little bit more light to the subject. Um, yeah, cool photo, good job. 
Okay. Here's an example of, I think, a good photo that's going in the right direction but isn't quite there. So what is the difference between an okay photographer and a really good photographer? I think this is a good photo. I mean, there's certainly nothing wrong with it. You've got depth of field. You've got the subject. It's well illuminated. Oh, look at that histogram. Good job. Um, but there are definitely things that you could take this up a notch. Um, the posing, the emotion, what is happening? Um, the very first thing that I see here is this super straight arm right here. Um, oof. All right. I think this was done in Photoshop. Um, work on your Photoshop, work on getting more accurate selections. So you don't get any of that jagged artifacting. That's going to go a long way. Uh, I don't actually mind that it looks creepy here because this is clearly a cosplay where it's supposed to look creepy and not a portrait. Um, so good job on that. Yeah, I see that you colored the face as well. Um, probably just n no makeup. Uh, done that day. That's fine, but uh, getting more accurate with your selections. Okay, but coming back to this photo, this is an example of a good photo, but what can make a good photo great? Um, again, I still think there's too much distraction in the background. All of this up here. Um, so this was shot at... Ah, we don't have any metadata for this guy. Um, this was shot at either pulled back way too far using too wide of a focal length um, or shot it like F4. Um, opening that out and really blowing out more bokeh so I see more of the subject would have been good. Otherwise, using a longer lens, um, 100 millimeters at F2.8 gives you almost the same depth of field as 50 millimeters at 1.4. So... Zooming in a little bit more uh, would have helped with the compression, getting a more interesting um, pose. Um, it's just flat, straight, flat. Um, yeah, all in all, pretty good photo. Um, pay more attention to the light. Pay more attention to uh, your, your camera techniques, what lens you're using, what aperture are you picking, um, and get more accurate with your Photoshop selections. Um, otherwise, I like this one. Okay. Uh, this looks like a cell phone photo. Um, <laughs> not too much I can say about it. Uh, again, which one is your subject? Which one of these pilots here is the thing that you want to look at? All right. So all in all, let's go back to the grid here. Uh, you definitely have some solid photos. Um, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. I like all of these here. Um, definitely some solid work. Uh, pay more attention to your camera settings. Pay more attention to your color. Uh, get more accurate with your Photoshop selections. Um, I think just care and practice are going to take you a long way here. Um, otherwise, you've got some good photos. Um, all right. Photographer number three. Here we go. All right. We have some automotive photography here. Interesting. All right, let's just swing through the set here, see what we see. Uh, crop in. A lot better without the flag, a lot better without the cone. Get closer to your subjects. All right, using a slow shutter speed to pan with the camera. I love it. I do hate that you have these palm trees here. <laughs> Um, let's crop them out and see what the photo looks like. I would love to give a, a lead space room in front of the subject here. I would love to do that. Um, I think this is already a better photo. Zoom in on your subject, get closer, um, pay more attention to, uh, what is making the photo good and what is making the photo worse. If there are distractions, get rid of them, crop them out. Good. I like it. Oh, I hate this person's head. <laughs> uh, this is very easily Photoshop outable. Uh, if you don't want to crop it, uh, otherwise, love good good use of the panning technique. Great colors. Um, good job. I personally am not a fan of the tilt. If you're gonna tilt it, ah, 
tilt it. I think this is a better photo because it's more intentionally tilted than this one, which looks like it should have been straight. Um, I like this one more as well. So if you're going to, if you're going to tilt, go full tilt. Otherwise try and make those lines straight. Uh, good photo. Yeah. A better vantage point maybe. So you don't see now that I'm looking at it, actually you've got crew or a tow truck and parked cars and tent. Not as much fan of that, but, uh, zoom in closer. Not bad. Um, for this photo, I, if possible, I would have tried to get a little bit closer, uh, so that you can get above this rail, uh, zoom in a little bit more or try and get from a lower angle. So you're shooting up. So you're getting more sky and less of all this garbage. Ooh, super interesting. Like it. Shooting at night, very hard. The car is still super crisp and clean. Well done. Like it. Pit crew. All right. Eh. This looks like a mistake, but uh, I totally understand that the reason why it's repeating is because big screens like that don't go at a constant rate. They're not always on. They're actually flickering. Just they're usually flickering slow enough that, uh, or fast enough that you don't notice. Ooh, rain. Love it. Get closer. Get closer. More interesting photo. Get closer. All right. There's... Ah! Here we go. Ditch all of the other stuff that you've shot so far. Show this one. I love this. Uh, you've got... You've got great colors. You've got great motion. Um, the background is interesting shapes. It's not distracting. Uh, everything's level. Ah! Love it. Good job. Pit crew... Ooh, moody. Fix that horizon line. Um, let's bring in a little bit of detail. Which one do I want? Detail? Where's Where's my brush? <laughs> uh, I don't do a lot of work in Lightroom. Here we go. So let's just bring this out a little bit more. Make the subject pop. Do a more accurate job than I did just now, but uh, I like it. I like it. Uh, work a little bit more on your tones if I'm supposed to see that this is mobile, because this is the subject. Um, then I want to see that's mobile. Obviously, that blows everything else out, but there are you know ways to make it happen. Uh, selective. Don't do global like I'm doing right now. Um, if you're not supposed to see that's mobile, I mean, that's the first thing I look at. So, um, kind of what I said about the other photographers, pay more attention to your subject. All right. Um, I'm going to go pretty quick through the rest of these here. Ooh, I love the dust and atmosphere. I would have loved to have seen this photo, just telephoto zoom in car going across the finish line with all the dust. Ah, love it. Um, cheeky. <laughs> kind of a weird one uh that's cool i like it okay uh i don't shoot cars i shoot portraits i don't have too much to say but hopefully that was helpful if you're doing more landscape type stuff um i want to work on your post processing give it some practice uh i want to see the details in those cars um i love this if you have a website or a cover photo it should be this one. <laughs> uh, great photo here. Uh, great composition, great colors, great sharpness. Good job mastering that pan technique. Uh, use a longer lens if you can afford it. Um, get a little closer to your subject. A lens extension tube might help. Um, just kind of focus in. There were some shots here. What do we got here? Shot like this, where I would have loved to have seen this as a finished photo. I think this is uh, more interesting than the whole thing, but again, you can only do that if you're getting in. Uh, just like the other photographers, what is your subject? Get closer to it. All right, good job. Next photographer, let's do this. All right, let's look at all of them here. All right, so we've got some portraits. Ooh. 
one thing immediately stands out to me from this set. Let's make the thumbnails a little bit so smaller. All right, do you guys see what I see? I'm going to give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Which of these things is not like the other? This guy here. So, I'm going to start from the bottom since that's at the top. You've got all these portraits, posed, lights, interesting, and then this guy. So, let's just, for example, show this one here. Very clean, well lit portrait. You've got, I love that you've got depth and you're playing with light and shadow. Um, there's no distracting elements. Kudos there. Um, this looks like an Instagram crop. So that's fine. Um, but then let's click on this other one here. This was either taken at night with an incredibly high ISO or on film. Either way, uh, this doesn't fit the vibe of the rest of your portfolio. So if you were to take this one out, I would immediately like the rest of the gallery. This is still a good image on its own, but just for the sake of consistency. As a photographer, you should not only be good, you should also be consistent all right but let's take a look at this set go through here really good quick uh, might have done a little heavy on the skin retouching otherwise not bad heavy on the skin retouching um is this an ad for Wilson what is your subject what is your purpose actually that was a good time to talk about that what is the purpose of a photo so when I'm doing family portraits, it is something to go up on the wall that the family um, feels good about. So capturing the smiling faces, capturing the emotion of the moment. You want them to look at it, say that's nice and feel good. Uh, if I'm working with an actor, I want that actor to be expressive and show a uh, creative director that they can do the job. So I want uh, someone to see that they are expressive and look good and can make that role happen. What is the purpose of this photo? Could be an editorial for Wilson or I don't know. If you're doing a stock photo, get rid of the logo. Uh, otherwise, if you were doing this for an ad, where's the negative space? Where's your text going? Put the model on one side or the other. They're plank in the middle, which if you were to do a magazine double truck, that means two page. The split's going right down her face. So think about what is the end use of the photo? What is this photo going to be for? If it's just for Facebook practice, fine. Um, but do get in the habit of thinking about where can this photo end up and how will it look in that format? So, um, all right, I'll keep scrolling here. Interesting. I like it. Um, good depth of field. Uh, they're tack sharp. You've got depth foreground elements happening. Um, I do hate that half her face is kind of being cropped by the net, so maybe not leaning into it so heavily. Um, otherwise, the pose is good. Always point the toes. Always point the toes. Um, and then a little bit more arch to the back. Otherwise, I like this photo. Good job. I already talked about that. Got some creative reflections going on. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what angles are flattering for your model? I'm venturing to say this isn't it. If she's arching her back, I can't tell because, uh, this is just going straight. Uh, her hips, hands, and foot are the closest thing to the camera. So they're the biggest. You're using a widening lens, making her look at the size of her head compared to the size of her foot. Um, it looks slightly ridiculous. Uh, Locked elbows generally never look good. Um, you've got all of these, uh, all of these lines here make the building look like that it's kind of converging in on itself or falling over, or falling onto your model. You don't want that. Um, but if you were to correct this in post, I'm sure it would not look better. <laughs> uh, okay, I lied. This looks a little better. Um, it does distort her head um, for sure. Um, her head is not that oval. Um, but by backing up using a slightly longer focal length, you could have avoided a lot of those issues by making the um, the foot and the head the same distance from the camera. Uh, you wouldn't get all those converging lines making it look like the building's falling off um, on top of her. And uh, it'd be less distracting. 
like you've got this random thing coming in um yeah interesting it's okay what is she looking at she's a little wide-eyed um get a little bit more of the model stare <laughs> like she's squinting at something um i could definitely see this as an editorial for um what clothing she's wearing I do like this. I like that you're playing with uh, layering and elements. You've got the shadow of the racket. Um, that's cool. Um, more intentionality. Uh, get a little bit closer to the wall. Use a longer focal length. Really zoom in on her. I don't want to see any of this distracting stuff. I don't want to see any of this distracting stuff. Um, it's fine. It's not particularly flattering, but it's fine. All right, I like this. Um, cool. Face is well lit. Um, one thing that I will say about this. All right, the eyes here. So the eyes are actually looking way too far off camera. You want to bring them back so that we are seeing more of the iris, not so much of the white. Um, the whites are just kind of creepy. If we were seeing more of the iris, I would say good on this photo um if these lines were straight that'd be even better <laughs> uh it's okay more light interface um this is properly exposed this is properly exposed her face is not um part of that's probably the hats but uh then get a reflector or light or something up there I don't personally shoot fashion. I see this pose a lot with fashion. Um, in interesting. You did it well. Uh, some of the things that I don't like about this photo that, uh, if, you know, just pay closer attention to the details. This hand is converging with this pole. Uh, if it was just here in the negative space, that would be a lot better. She's looking into the camera. Um, and I don't feel like this is a pose where you're like, looking into the camera, making eye contact. This feels more like a pose where you're looking down the body line, smiling maybe. So if her face was looking da slightly down this way or turned and looking down her arm this way, I feel like either one of those would have made a stronger photo. And then I could definitely see this um, on a cover of, I don't know, some, some hip magazine. Uh, one more thing, actually. We've got a fence line going straight through her neck here. Uh, you want to put the head in a clean spot. So shooting from a slightly lower angle, uh, you wouldn't see as much of the court. Um, her head would be uh, up in these trees, and so there'd be something clean right behind her. And then maybe shooting with a slightly longer focal length um, so that you wouldn't have these quite converging on her crossing arms. Otherwise, cool photo. Sunset. Uh, this is super distracting. I've, uh, in your camera shooting position, if you would have swung just slightly, um, camera right, so you're shooting more to her left, uh, you could have cropped all that out. Playing with light, just like the tennis racket, um, it's interesting. Watch out for hot spots when you are in direct sunlight, um, because now this is the first thing I'm looking at. <laughs> Uh, if you shot in raw, you can always paint down that area to make it match the rest of his face. Otherwise, cool. Again, hot spot. Um, and then cropping in a little more on this so that we're getting... Getting more of the playfulness and the light and shadow. Um, pay attention to your light. If you have garbage light, eh. So um, she's looking up into something. This would be a perfect opportunity for a light to be here, kind of like spotlighting her. Um, decent pose. She's, you know, pointing the toes, which is good. Um, but what's interesting about this photo? Uh, the, kind of the first thing I look at is the brightest part of the photo, which is right here, um, not, and then her. Um, playing a little bit more with lights. I mean, it's an interesting pose. I'm sure that can't be comfortable to sit on. Not a lot of posing positions. Um, sure. Oh, first thing I look at is this red pole. Um, yeah. <laughs> first thing I look at is the red pole. Uh, if this photo were just 
her in front of nothing with a red pull. Um, and then the Instagram or the histogram would have been properly exposed for her. I'd say, yeah, good. All right. I like this. Uh, you, you've got some foreground elements. You've got some background elements. Uh, get rid of some of this garbage, whether in camera or in Photoshop. Um, pose all right. Cool. Ah, remember that head in a clean spot? You've got this branch kind of giving her horns here. Uh, get rid of that. Either change your shooting position or Photoshop. Uh, so that her head is in a clean spot. Always change your shooting position if you can. Use Photoshop as a last resort, not as a first instinct of, ah, and Photoshop that out later, because usually it's just faster to move a little bit. Um, otherwise, you know, well lit. Uh, not really a fan of just the hand dangling that it should be doing something, whether it's gripping or caressing or running up her thigh or playing with her hair. Give life to the hands. Let them do something. Uh, all right. You've got light coming in from this way. They're all pretty well lit. Fashiony vibe. Um, I pay more attention to your colors. Um, just kind of like this is super bright and they're kind of dark. Um, I want them to be the first thing. Um, just more practice. All in all, looks pretty good. Okay, so one of the things that you did here, which is great compared to some of the earlier shots, you got a little bit lower, head in a clean spot. Um, the thing that I don't like about this is she's pushing the belly forward. Um, you did bring her face forward and down, which helps a lot, bringing forward and down. Otherwise, you've got the double chin. So good job there. Um, this looks just kind of natural light. Uh, the light's not that interesting. Look for better light. Um, and bring the belly back. Um, okay. Here's another thing about this model. So I'm sure her waist is here to here, but because of the way the jacket is, it is just making her look so much larger and she has no shape in this pose. So I feel like the model is doing everything right to give herself shape. But if this jacket were just kind of like poked behind her waist or whatever so we could see the curved silhouette of the hip um that would go a long way to helping this model look the best she can be um watch for distractions garbage 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 um so just look for the distractions look for where the model's posing but love having a clean spot look for better lights uh, it's, this is like the light that gives you raccoon eyes um all right so, uh, some things that I do love about this set. I love that you're playing with uh, layers. You're playing with foreground. You're playing with depth. You've got uh, the light on the tennis racket. You've got, um, ah, this one here, head in a clean spot. See, you've got the rail going right through his head. If you would have gotten lower and put his head here, or if you would have just gone up an inch and put this rail going above his head I would have loved either of those better. So um, paying closer attention to how your background intersects your foreground. Um, I love that you're playing with light. I love that you're playing with depth. Um, I'm not a fan of dappled light, but if you're going to do it and make it intentional, this feels intentional. I love that. All right. Cool. Next photographer. Let's go. All right. Looks like we got a little bit of cosplay, a little bit of portrait work going on. All right, let's take a look at these. I'll go through these all real quick, and then I'll come back. Interesting. Ooh. Cool Photoshop work. All right. All right, so a couple of things that stand out from this set. Um, I don't love how the leaves are intersecting with her forehead right there. If she would have just lowered so they're intersecting with the hair. That's the thing. It's kind of like the tilt. It's just barely intersecting. If it wasn't intersecting at all or if it was covering up much more her face, I would love this better. Um, actually, this 
is kind of what I think we're on the last photographer, right? Yeah, we are. So this is kind of what I'm talking about of a better version of, where is it? This. Using that longer focal length, getting more uh, lined up to the wall, um, having less distracting elements. Um, this, these two are in effect the same photo, um, but I do feel like this one is better executed. So this is how you can make this look more professional. Um, cool. Uh, I'm sure this was a vertical crop for Instagram. I want to give her foot a little more space. It looks like she's about to fall off. Um, shooting a little bit lower. Um, eye level is rarely the best level to shoot at. Shooting from a higher angle or shooting from a lower angle is usually a better bet. Um, try both. Explore your options. I feel like shooting from a lower angle, um, it would show more, more trees, more sky. Um, not too low of an angle because I like how... I'm using my hands and realize you can't see it. <laughs> I like how this trail here is kind of going off behind her. Uh, this was probably done in Photoshop. You got the infrared look going on, but I dig it. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is that you're kind of losing the bounds of her hair. So uh, if you were to separate that just a little bit. Okay, sun flare. <laughs> so one of the things that I love about sun flare is backlighting your model. And then you can either use a light or a reflector as you've done here to light them up. Uh, the lighting here, very beautiful, very pretty, uh, a plus photo. Um, one things that I don't like about it are when the sun flare covers up, uh, important parts of your image. If you have a couple kissing and it's like right in their face and covering their face. If you have the sun flare going over the person's eye, I hate that. But this photo, it's just kind of edging right here on the hair. Um, I, just like one of the photos that I talked about earlier, don't have them look so far off that all you see is the white of the eye. Um, oh, man. But besides that, honestly, besides her eye line, just bring the eye line slightly more over your shoulder. Um, killer. Love it. Great job. Cool, moody photo. It looks like a Photoshop composite to me, um, just because of how like perfectly cut this hair is. <laughs> but uh, nah, it, it was a well done composite. Um, I would like to see more tonal values on her face. Look at your histogram. I understand that it's dark and moody, but just bringing bringing her face up to the level of where skin should be. Um, I'm not a fan of the vintage Instagram fade where you crush all see how there's no blacks here? <laughs> Absolutely none. All of your all of your shadows start here. No blacks. That's a very popular Instagram fade look. I'm personally not a fan, but uh all in all, cool photo. I don't like that the sword is popping out the back of her head, head in a clean spot. Uh cool. Ah, oh, okay. Great photo, great color. Um, let's take a look at the skin. Ah, oh, skin looks good. Uh, shoot from just a little bit lower so you don't have the horizon line going straight through her face. Um, and then have her tilt forward you, towards you just a little bit and then head down just a little bit to compensate for that. Um, so that, you know, you're not looking up her nostrils. Uh, great photo, great color. Um, I feel like the blur or sky... Some, something's just a little bit weird, a little bit off. Um, the sword should really be on her shoulder so I can see her neck. Cutting her right at the chin makes it look like she has no neck, uh, when clearly she's a very slender model with a long neck. Um, so just lowering the sword here would have done wonders. Uh, having a catch light. There's no catch light here. Again, just like the very first, my very old portraits that I showed, eyes are the window to the soul. Um, having a good catch light. I dig it. Be really careful about your Photoshop work here. There's supposed to be a sun flare. So, <laughs> okay, so there's there was a sun flare in the original photo. You cut out what I presume is a white blown out background. You put in a sky. Cool. Uh, two things. One, I can see your outline here 
from your masking job, and I can see your outline here from the masking job, to there was a sun flare here. You need to do one of two things. Add the sun flare back like it's poking out from behind the clouds, or clone that out so there's not a divot, and then fix that color so you don't see the sun flare. Um, that happens. It's okay. Um, but you can't have half a flare. <laughs> Either put it back in with your with your new background, or if it doesn't make sense, take it out. This is super distracting. Uh, otherwise, cool photo. Good job. I hate that half his fist is cropped out, but um, nah, I dig it. Cool catch lights. All right, I like it. All right. So, uh, you know the Alfred Hitchcock? Here, I'm going to do this. When you have light underneath your face and everything is creepy. Um, yeah, if you have the light lower than their eye level, that's what's happening here. So, if I don't know if this is window light or if you lit it. If it was window light, um, it's unfortunate that the top shade was drawn and all the light's coming from the bottom of the window. Um, if you lit it, just raise it like another two inches um, and then head in a clean spot. She's growing cork. <laughs> uh, watch out for any flares that strike. And this is a very dark, moody picture. So some of the dark, moody pictures that I saw earlier, um, I was saying like, hey, I wish her skin tone were still good. This is an example of good. Um, here, actually, let's do this. I like this as a photo. I really do. What I don't like is this as a photo because the first thing I look at is this. So having a scrim or a flag or a more even light source um, would help eliminate this. If this was just sun from a window, um, kind of tough luck, but uh, repositioning what you can to avoid that. Catch lights, beautiful pose. Great strong jaw, uh, good depth of field, um, head in a clean spot. She's growing something out of her head here and out of her head here. Otherwise, good job. Ah, got no catch lights, man. Losing it, losing, love it, good job. Um, okay, so this is a good example. Uh, I talked about it at the very beginning. If you're going to have them touch their face, don't push in and touch their face, just very light. So she's actually pushing in and making her cheek bigger than it has to be. Um, I don't like that the pinky's out. Uh, other than those two things, cool photo. Uh, it looks like you did some skin retouching, but you can still see your pores and stuff, so good job. Cool. It's one of those very, you know, hipster fashion. I dig it. I think this is one of your stronger ones. I like the light. I like uh, how it's falling on her face. Um, it's a very pleasing light. Uh, I like the color tones. Good job. All right. Is that the is that the end? That is the the end of our blind critiques here. So uh, all in all, here pretty good job. Uh, just keep practicing. Just pay a little bit closer attention to those details. You have some really killer photos here. Um, I love this one. Um, I love this one. You know, fix that. Fix your Photoshop job. I love this one. If it weren't for that and the light, you know, that that's killer. Uh, light's very flattering on her. I love this one. Shoot more stuff like that. Um, the colors, right. It's interesting. Okay. So one of the things that I talked about with like distracting elements, this is big enough and it's in the same tonal range that it doesn't distract. This is big enough. And in the same tonal range, doesn't distract. You've got the, the blue and orange, you know, movie poster thing that's going on. That's super popular. Her skin is on the warm side. The background's on the blue side. The reason why that's popular is because those things complement each other and they look good. Um, if I were doing this for a publication, I would absolutely 100% Photoshop out this no parking sign or whatever that is. Um, otherwise, yeah, man, I love that photo. Um, all right, this photographer, um, I love that you're playing with layers and reflections and light and shadows. Um, again, uh, just pay more attention to your composition, pay more attention to your 
distracting elements um, really work on honing that light. So here, um, yeah, you've got bright sun, but you've harnessed it to make her look good. Um, let's see here, you've got flat light, but he is under an underhang. So it's kind of coming in from this area coming down. So you've still got the shadow under the chin, giving him a nice strong jawline here. You didn't do any of that. So um, you've definitely got some good stuff here. Uh, it's inconsistent. Um, just keep practicing. Good job. Automotive stuff. You really got the pan down. Uh, you would serve well from a lens extension tube or a longer lens. Uh, just keep practicing. I know that you can't really light your subjects. Man, shoot more stuff like this. I love it. Find the find the moments. Find, find the moments, find the decisive moment, find the elements that are like this, really gorgeous. Um, work on being able to draw out some of those tonal values. That would be a great shot that I'm sure that racetrack would love. Um, where was it? Shoot less of this and shoot more of this. <laughs> uh, good job, though. Uh, let's see, this photographer here. Uh, bring thumbnails up. Yeah, definitely some good stuff. A um, little bit closer. Just keep practicing. Um, look for the distracting elements. Look for the main subject. Make the main subject the main subject. Make them pop. Like here, they're getting lost in the photo. Um, I'm seeing the sky. I'm seeing the neon lights. And then, oh, yeah, there's a person there. So um, you've definitely got some good stuff. Um just keep practicing with uh, your camera techniques and camera control, uh, shooting this at f2.8 or f4, um, being able to see a little bit more of that gun. Um, this still wouldn't be tack sharp in focus. That's not possible unless you're shooting like f14, um, especially with this focal length. But um, a little bit, a little bit more attention to detail and decision making. Don't let your camera do all the work. Don't just shoot wide open all the time. A little bit of the work yourself, and these will definitely improve. Good stuff. Photographer number one here. Uh, yeah, pay pay more attention to just that subject. Getting closer. So I, <laughs> so I know I ragged on it and gave it a hard time. This fl flower photo. I do think this is one of your better photos here. So uh, you have a clear subject. Uh, you've got some pretty light. You've got some interesting shadows going on. Um, I mean, even this photo here, if you were to, you know, it's, it's interesting. You've got light and shadow and play. Um, get in closer to your subject um, because that is so much more interesting than that. Um, I saw that you saw an interesting moment here. It's kind of this, uh, it's one of these gnome very glens uh in a in a uh traffic circle which is kind of cool but um yeah work on angles work on composition work on really getting in and finding the subject that is interesting um also this walk you were kind of harnessed by not having interesting stuff find more interesting stuff <laughs> i like this i dig this um try and break things down into abstract shapes um I like this. Ah, oh, you were so close. Just a little bit more care and intentionality. I dig that. Ah, oh, this dude was awful. He was the worst. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm just kidding. So I will leave it with that. Thank you so much for watching uh, these blind critiques. Did you find this helpful? If so, give this video a like, thumbs up, share, comment. Uh, what did you find the most interesting? And uh, would you like to be a part of a future portfolio review? So um, I do know that a lot of these photographers are uh, amateur hobbyists. They're either just learning their cameras or they've been doing this for a little while, but uh, you know, still just kind of on weekends. Um, I would love to see uh, some more, some more experienced photographers too. Uh, give me, give me more flex of those uh, creative critique muscles. Uh, but if you like this again, like subscribe, share, um, let me know what you thought. If you want to see more of these, I would love to do it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.